What's going on, everybody? We're about to air an episode where I explain everything that's happened with UST, the deep pegging that we've experienced, as well as the collapse of the Luna price. This was shot yesterday, and obviously things have accelerated to the downside today. I just want to reiterate, this is a crash, a black swan of historic proportions. We have not seen anything like this in crypto land for a significant period of time. It very well might be a first of its kind. Now, a few things are really important. One is that it's really, really hard to summon the strength to be kind to others right now, but the amount of people who are suffering because of Luna right now is a lot, and the knock-on effects are going to be significant. And so being kind to others is truly a superpower. I encourage you all to be kind to the people around you. The second thing is these crises always, always open up doors of opportunity. The reality is, is that the core values and the core mission of crypto are not changed by this. Bitcoin and Ethereum and their value propositions are not changed by this. We can analyze exactly why and how this happened. I do a lot of that in this video. But the main message here is that the value prop and the potential for crypto and Web3 are still very much there. And this movement will continue and rebuild with stronger foundations for the next wave. It's also something where you need to understand that things coming down this brutally and this fast means that things can rebuild faster as well. I released a long Twitter thread with several key points that I believe are salient for today. But the main thing is be kind to others as much as it's possible, be unemotional. And remember that these crashes are part of the boom bust nature of crypto. This is a sign of how early we are. And really it's a sign of how much potential is still left in this industry for maturation, for growth and for evolution. Anyways, I just wanted to say, I understand how hard days like today are. I've been through several of them, both personally for companies, for everyone involved in the space, and you're not alone. We can all go through this together. We can all rebuild together. And the people who stay focused, who stay unemotional, those people, in my opinion, will probably end up being able to flip 22 into not so negative of a year, depending on how they approach the next few weeks and months. Again, every crisis brings opportunities and the unemotional, steady-handed will end up figuring out exactly where those are. I'm genuinely sending my best wishes to everyone out there as days like today are just simply rough. And on a human level, I wish I could give you guys all a hug, for real. And with that said, let's dive into my video on UST. Holy smokes, the last 48 hours in crypto have been absolutely insane. We've had the collapse of a $13 billion stablecoin UST, as well as the realization that Azuki, one of the most beloved blue chip NFT projects, was founded by a serial rug puller. We're going to get to all this and more, mostly focusing on UST and the Luna ecosystem. I know, I've been bad, I haven't made enough content, but I'm back and I'm super excited to go over what is, in my opinion, in age of opportunity right now in crypto land as we start to tick down into some pretty opportunistic buy zones. I'm not saying I'm getting ready to unload the wagon just yet and shoot all my shots, but I am telling you that I'm getting really, really excited by what I'm seeing across the macro ecosystem as well as price action. So let's get into it as we have a mega, mega episode for you today. Smash that like button, destroy it, obliterate it if you're happy to see Elio trades back and let's get into it. So first of all, let's get into this. We all know about UST and Terra. If you don't, this is a DeFi ecosystem that I've been covering really since the beginning of 2021. It's definitely something I've made a ton of money on. And most importantly, their UST stablecoin has been super popular as it pays 20% interest. I've been covering this for a very long time, but it's time to dig into how does UST and Terra work? Why was this so attractive and what the heck happened yesterday? So anyway, I'm gonna get through this quickly because some of these details are a little boring. But the point is, we have this stable coin supposed to trade at a dollar. This is not backed by US dollars, like USDC is backed by US dollars. I can send them to Circle, the creators of USDC, and get myself good old greenback US dollars, dirty fiat, but still good old greenbacks. I can redeem these coins for money. Now, UST is not backed by US dollars. In fact, it's backed by an algorithm, and it's called an algo stable or algorithmically stabilized coins. We'll go through how UST works and how it stabilizes at a dollar throughout this episode. But the point is, look, we have here UST pretty much nonstop stable, nonstop stable. Look at this chart. It is a dollar coin uh, for the last 180 days you see here. And then boom, 
we get this massive drop off where over the last few hours really in yesterday mainly we saw it start to depeg here and it came down to about 98 cents and this was a true panic especially for me having an f ton way too much money in the terra ecosystem and so i made the decision right around 98 cents after seeing some instability i said you know what I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sell. It's just not worth my peace of mind right now. And I'm so glad I did because immediately thereafter, it plunged down to 92 cents, 93 cents. And then we got the big crash and it went as low as 60 cents. And as you can see right now, it is fighting for its life, struggling here, and it's battling just for the 70 cent mark. You can see it came up and recovered into the 90 cents throughout last night. And now it's fighting for its life once again. So first of all, what the heck is UST? What is Luna? Why is this such a big deal? We're gonna get to that right now. If you guys are excited, destroy that like button. I need all the likes for my day coming back to the channel. Let's get hyped. I wanna make some great content as right now we're coming into the good part of the market to be paying attention. That's when the market's bad. You wanna pay attention when the market's bad. Uh, and that's the times you wanna start understanding where your buy zones are. Anyway, let's jump into this. So there is a nice thread by uh, John Wu.eth. Uh, check him out. And again, I don't know anything about his content, but this thread, so can't, can't co-sign or certify anything he says, uh, but let's just go through this. So he talks about how UST works. So an $18 billion stable coin is losing its peg with all the magical chaos of algo stables. Okay, so I misspoke earlier. It's an $18 billion stable coin is where it was before this happened. And again, that big size led a lot of people to become quite complacent and comfortable with UST, storing lots and lots of money in it, myself included. So the $18 billion stablecoin is falling apart. Here's everything you need to know. As you can see, stable, 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 and then we get the plunge. Okay, so here's how UST works. And then we're gonna talk about, because there's another thread that's actually really good. Um, actually, sorry, that's the wrong. Another thread that's really good that talks about exactly how this went down. Uh, but let's talk about how UST works. So UST is something that you can mint with Luna. Luna is a blockchain. It's in the IBC, it's in the Cosmos ecosystem. In Luna, the way it works is you can actually take your Luna and mint UST stable coins with your Luna. So if Luna's trading at $50, you can mint 50 USTs. Now, if UST, no matter what price it is, no matter what price UST is trading for on the exchanges, you can always get $1 worth of Luna back. So let's just say I meant 50 USTs with my Luna and maybe UST depegs like it did yesterday. Maybe on Binance, people are trading it slightly lower than a dollar. Well, it doesn't matter. I can just go get back $50 worth of Luna and sell that. So if Luna is trading at $25 with my 50 UST, I can get two Lunas with my 50 UST. I hope you're tracking that. So if I mint my UST with Luna, I can always get $1 worth of Luna at current prices back when I go back from UST. So that regulating force means you're not just stuck with UST, you can always send it back into Luna. So you can burn Luna, create UST, or burn UST and create Luna. It's this regulating force. And so where does UST get its demand? Well, UST gets its demand because they pay these insane yields of 20%. I know I love me some UST because I've been making a killing just sitting in stable coins throughout the bear market of 2021, as well as as things got bearish in December, I stabled up heavily into UST and I've just been earning percents, earning stable yields on my holdings. That's really nice to be outside of the volatility of the market, earning yield on your coins, but it doesn't work if UST fails to be a dollar coin and start slipping below that, then there's no point in holding USD. It's not the same value proposition. So where does USD get its utility? It gets it from Anchor Protocol, where you get 19.5%, rounding up to 20 for staking. Now, a huge portion of USD's circulating supply is in Anchor. It's been as high as 70% of the entire stablecoin supply is earning that yield in Anchor. I mean, what's the point in holding USD if you're not going to stake it? To be honest, you might as well be in USDC or something that you can redeem for dollars, something more stable. So again, there's been some FUD saying that Luna's market cap needs to be way bigger than UST or else the system doesn't work. That's actually not true. Um, and the Luna market cap can be less than UST market cap. Doesn't matter because as UST gets burned to Luna, that can increase the Luna market cap. They're actually creating more Luna. But as this tweet or accurately identifies, what's even more important is the directionality and stability of Luna's price, right? Luna's the one that goes up and down, the one that you buy in to make money, right? UST, you're just getting yields. But 
It's a big problem if the average redemption price of Luna for UST is high relative to Luna's current price. So let's take this example. This is a really, really good example here that he uses. So say the price of Luna is a billion dollars. It's never going to be that high. It's trading at about 15 bucks right now. It has been as high as like 100 or something. Um, but let's just say that it's a billion dollars. So I take one Luna coin and I mint a billion UST. And then let's just say Luna falls down to $1. This is an extreme example, but just helps you understand. So if Luna's super high price, I mint a bunch of UST, I'm holding all that UST, a billion, and then Luna goes down to a dollar. Well, then what I can do is I can automatically mint a bunch of Luna with that UST. In this case, if Luna's trading at a dollar, I can mint a billion Luna, meaning that one trade would have created a billion new Luna tokens, which I can now then sell onto the market. So it creates massive inflation. That is exactly what's happening over the last few hours as people were struggling to get out of UST. UST was depegging. People were then automatically redeeming Luna and selling Luna. But we'll get to that in a second. So here's the thing. This is an interesting setup for a project. It makes sense that with a, a coin like Luna, which people generally love, has huge trading volume, if there's ever an offset, a depegging of UST down to you know 99 cents or 98 cents, then people would buy those USTs, sell them for $1 worth of Luna, and then sell the Luna. And so they would make money by buying the low USTs. This is a way to regulate the market back up to a dollar so that that conversion back to $1 worth of Luna is something that that always brings the UST back towards that $1 price point. And that works well and good unless you're being attacked by one of the biggest financial entities in the world. Drum roll, please. Let's cue the music because this is about to get spicy. And again, if you guys are enjoying this content, it doesn't hurt. It does not hurt to destroy that like button, to absolutely obliterate it. Trust me, it's good. It's a very good thing. So big shout out to OnChain Wizard here who broke down what I believe was the source of this. Again, there's some speculation here. I'm not sure how much of this is confirmed, but this whole collapse only makes sense in the context of a coordinated attack. Anyway, let's dive in here. OnChain Wizard explains how to make over $800 million attacking crypto, uh, the once third largest stable coin Soros style. Now, apparently Soros did something similar like this to the, to the Bank of England. I'm not super familiar with that story, but that's what people are referencing. Okay. So the story begins in late March when the Luna Foundation Guard, or LFG, let's freaking go, starts buying Bitcoin to help back UST. I'm sure some of you guys saw these stories. A Luna Foundation buys a billion dollars in Bitcoin, yada, da 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 Everyone cheers. Everyone celebrates. Luna has our back. Luna's part of us. Luna's supporting the ecosystem. And it was crazy how many people hopped on board with Luna effectively bridging the gap between themselves and Bitcoin. Now, at the time, it did seem like some great news, but there were definitely the people in the corner saying, well, what happens when they sell it? And uh, nobody wanted to say, shut up, shut up. No one talk about that, you know? And that's how it is in crypto. People only want to focus on the upside. Uh, but there are those voices and those bearish voices. You shouldn't always listen to the bears, but it's worth considering consequences. Anyway, so the story starts in late March. They buy a bunch of Bitcoin. And by March 26th, they had over a billion dollar position. This is leg one that made this trade attack brilliant, okay? The second leg comes from four pool. Now, here's the deal. Luna has most of their liquidity on curve in what's called three pool. So if you want to sell your UST, really what you do is you take the UST, you send it back to Ethereum, and then you trade that UST for USDC, USDT, or DAI. So those are the three most trusted stable coins, USDC, USDT, Tether, and then DAI. And so there's a pool of those three coins mixed with UST, and that's mostly how you get in and out of UST. There's hundreds of millions of dollars, usually over a billion dollars of liquidity in that pool. Okay, so now you understand Three pool was how things were normally being done. Now they're introducing four pool, baby. It's the fourth pool. But it's actually a really big deal because this four pool was going to provide enough liquidity that an attack like what we saw yesterday would probably have not been viable or would have been way harder, way more expensive to pull off. So they're trying to set up this four pool with Frax Finance, USDC, USDT, and UST, right? No die. Die is dead. Anyway, so here's the deal. The attacker borrows 100,000 BTC. We don't know exactly when this happened, other than it was sold into Do Kwan's buying, still speculation, but this is generally what we think happened, and that Luna Foundation Guard bought 15,000 BTC between March 27th and April 11th, so you just take an average price of about 42,000. So to recap so far, Luna Foundation is building this new liquidity pool that's going to be bigger, better, stronger, so it will be really hard to attack. And meanwhile, this attacker borrows a bunch of Bitcoin and starts trying to sell it OTC to Doquan in exchange for UST. So the attacker's borrowing a ton of Bitcoin, 
They're selling that Bitcoin to Do Kwon and, and Luna Foundation. So they ended up with a ton of UST that they bought over the counter, as well as a major, major short position in Bitcoin. So in anticipation of this four pool thing, which is like this crazy liquidity pool that's going to be super secure, what we have is effectively Luna Foundation pulls $150 million of liquidity from the original curve pool with the intention of setting up a new pool so that this pool, again, the bigger, better, stronger pool. So there's low liquidity on curve. And at this moment, this attacker has a huge position in Bitcoin, a huge short position in Bitcoin, as well as a major billion dollar position in UST. So right after Luna Foundation pulled the liquidity about to set up their new pool, the attacker begins draining the remaining liquidity on curve. This is really important is if you take all the liquidity out of the pool, then people can't sell their UST and they have to go sell it other places, eventually driving down the price of UST. So draining the liquidity from curve was a key part here that wouldn't have been possible or wouldn't have been as easy after four pool got created. So this begins the depegging and we get down to about 97 cents here. This is where I start sweating and I start thinking, holy smokes, is this the end of Luna? I'm starting to really worry. I'm talking in all my alpha chats behind the scenes, wondering what's going on and planning my own exit from UST because I had too much money tied up there as well, just really trying to understand because most of these stablecoin depeggings usually get resolved. So I'm keeping myself cool, calm and collected. UST is depegged before, DAI is depegged before, a lot of stablecoins have depegged before. So it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. But I'm thinking, all right, well, I need to start, you know, managing my risk here. So then what we don't see coming here is this attacker then takes the rest of their billion dollars. Remember, it only took them about 350 million to drain the curve pool. Now they take the rest of their UST and they start dumping it on Binance, right? And Binance and these other centralized exchanges are where the peg starts going crazy, right? So all of a sudden, the peg gets dumped all the way down and you see it peaked uh, or it dropped as low as 60 cents here with this aggressive sell-off. Meanwhile, this is causing fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and people are running for the exits, and now you have a bank run where people are seeing UST fail. So we have a trifecta now, UST in free fall. We also have people converting their UST back to Luna, dumping Luna aggressively, Luna's in free fall. And then we have people like the Luna Foundation trying to defend the peg by selling Bitcoin. Bitcoin in free fall. What does Bitcoin in free fall do? It drags down Luna price even more. And so what do we have is this spiral. And this spiral is super, super violent and not easy to fix. So the crypto community begins panicking. They wonder how much BTC will be sold to keep the peg. There are liquidations across the board. Luna pukes because of its redemption mechanism. The attacker very well could have shorted Luna as well. I'm sure they did because that was the big short. It's down almost 80% over the last few days. And BTC fell 25% from 42k on 4.11 to 31.3 thousand. Anyway, not that it matters, but it seems like they made at least 800 million dollars, not accounting for the fact that they probably shorted Luna, which could have been at you know as much as 800 million dollars or maybe even more. So this person made probably over a billion dollars with this attack and really shown a spotlight on one of the biggest vulnerabilities in the entire crypto space, which is algorithmic stable coins. So what do we take away from this? Well, we know that some things work in a bull market and don't work in a bear market, but but more importantly, this is, in my opinion, one of those huge historic moments, a nasty day, a huge unraveling of leverage within the crypto ecosystem that will lead to calmer waters. That's the reality, is that crypto goes through violent cycles of building up a ton of hopium excitement, parabolic uptrends, and those things have downsides. But in order to reach a bottom, to have the market normalize and then reset for another wave, which is what we're all waiting for, we need days like this to happen happen and days like this happening make me feel like we're one step closer to a true market reset. I'll give you my TLDR, my, my full market outlook here at the conclusion. I just wanted to touch on this. Like clockwork, we have immediately after this, just today, just hours after this happened, Janet Yellen coming out and saying, oh, looks like we need more regulation in the stablecoin industry. This is why it all feels so coordinated, is that you have regulators, big financial players. And by the way, you think banks like Luna and UST, a decentralized uh, algorithmic stablecoin that can be held in wallets all around the world, used like US dollars and pays you 20% APY, that's something that threatens the entire financial system that exists today. And quite frankly, its survival and it thriving and becoming trusted is, is a real threat to the sort of old guard. This isn't even tinfoil hat stuff. Without a doubt, the machine of the financial system hates this and does not want this. So seeing a big financial player, uh, I believe people think it's Citadel, allegedly 
allegedly, allegedly. I have no idea if that's true or false. This is just hearsay. Uh, but the reality is, is people think this might be Citadel. Uh, again, a huge, huge financial player in the mainstream financial world. And then you have now the regulators coming out and talking about how this is a systemic risk that must be addressed the day after. It seems, it feels to me a little bit too close for comfort. It's all too convenient. And you got to wonder, you got to start scratching your head and thinking, is this coordinated to bring down DeFi, to rein in stable coins, and to try to give regulators a popular lane to control the industry? Because we all know that regulating the industry is super unpopular and that the people genuinely do not want the regulators involved and that the more crypto-friendly politicians and lawmakers are getting a ton, a ton of support. You guys tell me in the comment section below, was this orchestrated? Was this planned? Let me know. I'm very curious as to what you think. Again, you can call some things coincidence, but at a certain level, it's like, come on. Now, as if the day couldn't get any worse, what we have is the founder of Azuki, Zagabond. Long story short is this guy puts out a, uh, a blog article where he talks about how Azuki was built off of the learnings, the learnings from other projects such as Funks. He also had a project called Zunks as well as Tendies. Now, Pretty much this set the crypto community, this set the NFT community ablaze because the reality is, is those projects were more or less considered rug pulls because they were abandoned by the founder. Now, there was a lot of controversy, a lot of debate. What is a rug pull? People say he fulfilled his roadmap and then left. But what really got me was apparently he set up a profile, a Twitter profile, and pretended to be a woman and pretended that one of the projects was a female-led project in an attempt to effectively generate more interest for the project. Now, it's all fine and good if you leave a project, if the project isn't working out and you make an announcement that you're either winding the project down, airdropping them something new, giving them a way to get into your new project. There's ways to carry things forward after things don't work out. And we understand that not everything works out. But for me, the fact that they created an alternate identity and then the project was discontinued after Mint, it was just way, way too many things. And I'm not going to go ahead and call him a rugger, but I'm just like, why would you put this out on a day like that? The only only conclusion I can come to is that someone was going to expose him and that he had no other way to do it. He came onto a Twitter spaces uh, hosted by Andrew Wang that had 13,000 people in it. That's the most people I've ever seen in any Twitter spaces ever. He was responding to some of the criticisms from the community and explaining his perspective. And then out of nowhere, he just leaves. He just leaves the Twitter spaces, doesn't say goodbye, no sign off, no final words. It's just crazy, crazy. And so the memes are absolutely rolling in. Uh, people are likening him to the Tinder swindler. Um, the name is Zagabond. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Uh, anyway, as you can see here, this is an absolutely crazy story. And Azuki's floor price went absolutely tumbling in the wake of this announcement. So I'm very sorry to the Azukis out there. To be honest, the project is so strong, the community is so strong that there's probably a future for Azuki. I'm not going to say whether or not this has any implication on whether Azuki can be successful in the future. I'm not going to go there. I sincerely hope that Azukis are okay as it's a huge project in the space and it would be great for NFTs if they continued to succeed. Uh, but nonetheless, this is just an absolutely crazy story breaking on the exact day that UST and the Luna ecosystem broke as well. Come on, that is some crazy drama in the short span of just 24, 48 hours. So why am I excited by all of this crazy negative news? Well, to be honest, in the peak of the bull market when everything goes 100x and the valuations are just unthinkably high, it's really hard to feel what's called an edge. It's really hard to feel like you're seeing something or getting to something early when everything just insta moons and insta pumps and you can't really justify any kind of fully diluted valuations that you see out there. So in these bearish times, when the market is getting really, really slow, and then you see things start to really break down, those are the moments where you can see a true market reset on the horizon. Now, having lived through the 2018 market reset, I can tell you it was brutal. There was all kinds of pumps, hopium throughout 2018, and then it ended the same way. And it really feels like 2022 is the same type of ball game. The only difference here is that the Fed is talking real, real tough this time. And then it kind of leads to the conclusion. We're all wondering where is the Fed going to pivot? Because if they keep doing this and they keep pushing the economy with all risk assets being pushed down like this, at a certain point, there's going to be a change in the way Fed is going to be approaching the markets. So we have the collapse of one of the biggest DeFi projects, something that was kind of a remnant of the bull market, which kept holding strong throughout this bearish period, but has finally come down to earth. These types of unwindings help us reset as a full market. I will say though, $30,000 in Bitcoin has held real 
feel strong. And in my opinion, we're starting to enter into this long-term accumulation zone. I don't think we just reverse right back up to the moon. Nope. I think that we have to wait, accumulate here on the lows. And then when we see a macro reset, or more importantly, a little bit of a pivot out of the Fed, which should come right around the end of summer or the election, we'll probably see a major change in crypto land. Meaning, that either here or the next tick down are starting to become those intergalactic buy zones where, of course, if you look back in a few years from now, you'll be really, really happy that you were accumulating there. At least that's my opinion. That's my thought process. You should do your own research. Please, please, it's the bear market, everybody. At least do yourself a favor in the bear market and start taking responsibility for your own financial decisions. I begged people to do this during the bull market. I begged for people to be very, very cautious in taking profits throughout Q4 because we'd already seen the collapse in May. But no matter how many times I said that, I get trolled so much on social media saying the metaverse is happening. It did happen. There was a huge metaverse wave and there were so many opportunities to make money and take profits and then get ready for the 2022 bear, which was the base case that we outlined. It's unfortunately been even worse than I had hoped for. But nonetheless, we're here and there's so many opportunities as crypto is so obviously the future of finance, the future of culture with NFTs, the future of gaming. It's gonna gobble up the internet as we know. It. And to be honest, days like today, where we're seeing yet another amazing opportunity to rewind the clock, to get even more Bitcoin, Ethereum, and your favorite high conviction plays, be that in L2s, in DeFi, in NFTs, in gaming, there is going to be so much excitement in this industry over the next few years. And so the opportunity to accumulate a ton more of these assets and to prosper at an even higher clip when the market does resume is very, very exciting to me. And I sincerely hope that you all understand the game that's being played here, which which is you accumulate when the times are tough, you stay engaged when the times are tough, you stay unemotional when times are tough, and that allows you to truly control your destiny as the market takes back off again. As always, I'm Elio Trades. If you enjoyed this, destroy that like button, smash that like button. We're back, baby. You can follow me on Twitter at Elio Trades. I thank you so much for watching. Huge imposters event happening this week. Again, that project is crushing it and almost didn't even waver during the insanity of yesterday when other NFT projects were crumbling to the ground. It shows the long-term committed community we have. And I'm so, so thankful to have this community behind the project. Huge things coming. Can't wait to show you guys. We're grinding each and every day and crushing it throughout this bear market. And I'm so excited to be doing this with all of you. As always, I'm Elio Trades, and I thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.